Hey guys, <clears throat> so today you and I are going to talk about step by step, so let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, what are the step by step procedures for creating s s web applications uh, from scratch to a complete launched product? Alright, uh, well uh, let's cover the standard setup for uh, when I uh, create a, let, let, let's just walk through how I usually set up a like a corporate enterprise level um, uh, team, if that if that makes sense. Uh, we'll skip all the necessary security infrastructure because basically, if you're doing it in a corporation, it becomes a little bit more difficult. Uh, usually, because you usually have uh, you have a lot of third-party systems, access control, different networks uh, that you're dealing with, and you have like firewalls and like all of this good stuff. But the basics is, in essence, you create a if you're going to do this for a team. First things first, you create a repository on some type of version control system, GitHub for example. Then you push some type of initial commit, usually it's something very simple, you create this hello world application server, if it's a front end product or a back end product, doesn't really matter, there's more tooling involved, so let's say it's a back end project, well then the hello world API is fairly simple, you create, a, you establish a server in some programming language, doesn't matter which one you have, uh, you uh, create a uh, build script for it so that you can basically compile or de run depending on if you're using a scripting language or a compile language and then depending now again if you, the way you're going to deploy things if it's going to run on a like a vm or something like that usually people are using docker these days so you create a docker file of some sort and so when the pipeline script in github actions for example runs it's going to take care of running like unit testing running like uh, linting and checking and things like that and then building and comp building your uh, application into a buildable art what well, we call them artifacts but you know depending on your lingo that's going to then be pulled into the docker container that's going to be built and then it's going to be deployed to wherever you store your docker containers usually that's in some type of cloud solution or a closed repo like a cloud uh, closed uh, container repo of some sort and that brings us to cloud providers or providers because the deployment is a little bit different depending on who who is doing your hosting so if you have a host such as say Amazon or GCP or Azure or something like that you basically need to create your own account like your a resource account that you're going where you're going to spin up your old, your different services and then either depending on how you know how big it's going to be either you use some type of uh, uh, off the shelf solution that might be something like Heroku as an example that's a fairly simple one where you you basically you create the repository you just connect your repository to Heroku and then the docker container and all the docker file and so forth is basically handled for you you don't have to do much more if it's Amazon GCP or Azure or something like that you're gonna have to do a little bit more work where you might have to wire up uh, your account which as I said like if you want to push your docker container to like their uh, code repository you're gonna have to do some manual work there's a few guides for how to do that uh, if you wanted to anywho uh, basically when you get to this state you now have the ability to push your code to github that's gonna run some github actions build your artifact or so forth and so forth and there's quite a few integrations for webhooks where you can basically deploy your built container to wherever that's stored right now you're in, a, in the first part of it is done now you have the ability to containerize or create an artifact that can be run in some type of production environment now comes the second part which is deployment into a production environment where now you need to have a domain of some sort where you can run the code you don't always have to if let's assume that you don't register like a custom domain name or something like that because you don't necessarily have to do that all you really need is a box to run this thing on and usually you're going to run that on a VM of some sort or in a Kubernetes cluster or something like that which each of these different cloud services have and they're all slightly different so you have to configure that but usually the minimum, minimum requirement is as I said you need to have an account on one of the providers uh, side and if it's like Heroku or some 
similar sort of service, you don't do this. It's actually just taking care of you, you for you. You just have to follow whatever specific guide it's about. And once that's done, they will pull that container that you created and put that in a running application somewhere. And usually they expose some type of you know, by default uh, domain that you can use. And then that's basically how you access your application from the internet. Now this will differ wildly in terms of how complex it gets depending on you know if it's a really large corporation usually you have quite a lot of other things that you need to consider here where you might have logging, you might have telemetrics, you might have like different types of storage systems like your databases things like that. Uh, you might have as I said firewalls, uh, you might have uh, custom domains and subnets and so forth, like it really comes down to like how big is this system going to be. If the, th if the thing that I described for you now is basically how practically every small st new product starts, like it's that simple because now you are uh, in a state where you can get code from a laptop in your code repository all the way up to a production re like a release into somewhere where you can host the thing right so this is the bare minimum usually and then usually when you set up the team you have some type of kanban board or something like that where you can declare your work tasks uh, and uh, prepare work which is usually done in something like year or confluence or so forth and so forth so what I want you to take away from this is that the step-by-step -step procedure for creating programs from scratch and then completing a launch to production is number one create a code repository on some type of uh, version control system uh, or code repo uh, hosting so solution like say github push your uh, create a web application uh, whatever it's supposed to be doing usually a hello world application is fairly simple to start off with because then you can build upon it afterwards create a build script for that so that it can actually run uh, as a program on either a web in a web server or as a single process it might have an embedded web server depends on which language and stack you're using and then put that either in a container or some script that just builds the artifact uh, and so whatever is going to run it can run it and then you need somewhere to store that artifact usually that's going to be either a Container repo or some play like a blob storage if you're using zip if you're just like storing zip files or something like that, and then uh, you set up a hosting service of some sort. If it might be it might be like so one of the smaller providers or one of the really big uh, ones depends on what your setup's going to be like, and then you need to decide basically how are you going to run the thing? Is it going to run on something like Kubernetes or are you just going to use plain old VMs? So, depends which one you're picking but basically the, you're gonna have to spin up some resources at the very least uh, and you're gonna have to wire that up to some type of DNS usually if you spin up like an EC2 instance in Amazon for example you get like that for free so now you all you really need to know is how to actually get your code onto that app uh, to that computer and that depend it really depends on like how you want to do it but usually there are webhook integrations that you can put up for things uh, where you can actually pull the code or push the code depending on you know when you run your pipelines in say github actions or something like that and then that basically means that now when you push code the code will go into your uh, application and you can access it through the DNS that has been provided. And there is a million other things that you could need to be able to do, but that would be the bare minimum, I would say, in order to basically have a functioning workflow for a software team. And then you usually have some way of tracking stories and things like that. Uh, I would say that this is the bare minimum, extremely simplified. Have a great day.